gonna do mechanical rotational systems, which I'm, it's like kind of repetitive because I'm going to draw these like direct analogies. And so I want to make this thing like, as like, I, I essentially just use the same exact template for these two lectures because they're so analogous, okay? So we now introduced a few lumped parameter elements for mechanical systems in rotational motion. So Newton's laws of motion apply uh, uh, to these as well, but in their angular analogs. Let a torque, T, and angular velocity, omega, be input to a port in a mechanical rotational element. Since for mechanical rotational systems, the power into an element is the product of the torque and the angular velocity. We call the torque and angular velocity the power flow variables. Uh, some mechanical rotational elements have two distinct locations between which its angular velocity is defined. We have these uh, torsional springs that we'll talk about in a few minutes, but uh, on one side of the torsional spring, you could have uh, one angular velocity, and the other side, you could have a different angular velocity. Um, whereas some elements have just one, so rotational inertia, like a flywheel, it only has one angular velocity, but it's always implicitly referenced to ground. Okay, we'll talk more about those too. Uh, uh, ground being the inertial reference frame. This is analogous to how a, a point in a circuit can be said to have a voltage, by which we mean relative to ground. So the flywheel can have an angular velocity meaning relative to some inertial reference frame. In fact, we call this mechanical rotational inertial reference ground. Work done on the system over a time period is just the integral of the power over that time period. And you can substitute it in for the power, just the product of torque and angular velocity. So we can compute the work from those two quantities. The angular displacement theta is the integral of the angular velocity, which, I mean, is not surprising to anyone. Kinematic equation. Uh, also, we use theta because it's really the only variable that we like for angles. Apparently. Alpha, beta, theta, gamma, right. phi, psi. I think that's it. That's all you're allowed. No more angles than that or you're done. <laughs> just cut it off at that. You can just do like theta 1, theta 2, that's fine. If you use like A for an angle, no. <coughs> Not an angle. And we're, su we're very superstitious about this. Like we just don't want to go there. Like, so oh, I ran out of variables? I guess I'll just put in sub start putting subscripts on. Alpha sub alpha, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, good. Uh, the angular momentum, another familiar quantity, is just the integral of the torque. We now consider two elements that can store energy, called energy storage elements. Consider an element that you can dissipate energy with, um, called an energy dissipative element, and two elements you can supply power to the system from outside, called, sor called source elements. We're just going to cover springs today, but springs will be fine. So a rotational spring is defined as an element for which the angular displacement theta across it is a monotonic function of the torque through it. Okay, so there are actual discrete rotational spring elements. So a torsional spring or rotational spring, you'll hear both terms. Pretty much use torsional and rotational synonymously, so just get used to that. But um, can anybody think of a, a rotational spring that they've encountered before? Like an explicit rotational spring. Would a tape measure be one? I, I have never opened one, but it's got to be, right? I've, have you seen the inside of one? Yeah. Yeah. Is it like a, like a wound coil and it just wind up more and more? Yeah. Closed pins. Closed pins is a good one. So there are two. So yeah, there's there are two different uh, varieties. One of which you're like twisting something more and more and more. And the other one that you're um, you have like the coil, like the clothespin one. And it's explicitly a coil, and it and it rotates like that, which is another cool torsional spring. And the hairspring of a clock. Oh, like clocks have a lot. Yeah, clocks have a lot of them. Or in like 
Mouse traps. Yep, exactly. And then there's yeah. like uh, even like your so uh, binder clips. So like you open up a binder clip. Ah, we've got one. So it it doesn't look like. Um, I that wasn't that wasn't the kind I was thinking. Um, I was thinking of the ones like the black ones, the black ones with like the two wire like, things coming off of them. Yeah. People don't know what vinyl clips are. I swear there was one here I there's played with for like a year. Ones, like Every time I lecture, yeah. metal. They're like a metal oh, piece yeah, with two wires in it. Yeah. How? Where did it go? I swear there was a vinyl clip here forever, and I used it all the time to illustrate stuff and to fidget with. It was the original fidget spinner. <laughs> This could be mine. I'm missing mine. Okay, so doesn't have to look like uh, a coiled spring to be a torsional spring because we just define it as being something that if you displace it, if you twist it, essentially, it resists more and more. The other like really common time that we'll uh, uh, encounter torsional springs is in a shaft. Okay. So we don't typically put something explicitly in there that is a uh, spring-like element. Well, we can. It's not as common, but we can. Um, but if you have a long shaft, then it, relative to its diameter, a long shaft, then if you twist one side, uh, the other side doesn't twist instantaneously, right? No. So if you have a really long shaft, if you start to twist, then the other side lags behind it a little bit. Right, and so that is a sort of spring-like action. If you start twisting more and more, this side feels more and more torque building up. Right? Yeah. So that we have to take that into account with with uh, shafts. If they're long, if they're short, then relative to their diameter, then we typically just say they rotate in, uh, simultaneously. Um, also, if they're hollow. Uh, if they're hollow. Um, you can have, so that would be, um, it affects the inertia more, but. I thought it had less twisting if, you, if it was hollowed out because there's no material in the middle to, twi uh, to translate that twisting. Relative to, I think if you think of it in terms of weight, I think that's true. If you had a hollow shaft because you could, you could keep the weight down, uh, less material. material. I gotta look at that screen. Yeah. Um, I have to think about it. But in any case, uh, uh, if you have a linear rotational spring, which is a decent approximation of, of several elements that behave in a spring-like manner, we can use Hooke's law in the angular form and just say that the torque is proportional to the twist, to the, to the angular displacement. Um, as typically a function of material properties, the spring constant it's typically a function of material properties and geometry, just like for a translational spring. Um, this means the element's constitutive equation uh, 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 is just, if it's linear, is just 118 because that's what it means to be a rotational spring. Uh, there are many examples of nonlinear springs. Um, we can often use a linear model in, a, in some operating regime. The elemental equation for a linear spring can be found by taking the time derivative of 118, and that's dt dt, which sounds funny, but different t's, right? The time derivative of the torque is equal to k times the time derivative of, of theta, which is just omega, right? And we look at a spring element, it looks similar to the translational spring element. Um, but let's talk for just a minute about these uh, uh, symbols here. So we've got an angular velocity on one side and an angular velocity on the other side. So that's, you can have two different angular velocities on a torsional spring. Um, the direction is unambiguous of this sort of circular notation uh, if you have it go behind something. But, I went through like a longer argument for it this morning, but if you have a, uh, if you don't have some solid object to show it going behind, you can't tell unambiguously what this, what direction this is, or this is, 
um, you can either think of it as being, so we're always using a right hand rule, so your mind can flip back and forth between thinking that those come out of the board and go into the board. <laughs> so you're, you're, uh, it's ambiguous, so unless you draw something solid in front of it. So if you draw something like this, and then you draw your arrow like that, then it's unambiguously into the board and then coming back out of the board. So this one would be uh, uh, pointed to the right, as are these two drawn in the figure. The other way to draw rotational quantities is the way that I draw the torques. So you can actually draw torques this way, and you can draw angular uh, velocities the way we drew torques. You can, but since we have two quantities at the same point, I didn't want to draw two arrows there or two things, so I switched. But I also wanted to illustrate that a torque um, uh, uh, direction, so it, if you have an arrow for a rotational thing, what that's doing is, it's, if it's a linear arrow, you're pointing in the direction your thumb should point in right-hand rule. So uh, the, the, on the left side of the figure, um, we have our right thumb pointing to the right, and the, on the right side, we have our thumb pointing to the left. Those are two different directions um, for uh, 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 angular coordinates. OK. Uh, finally, energy is stored in elastic potential energy for these rotational springs, uh, making it an energy storage element. The amount of energy it stores depends on the torque applied. So for linear, linear rotational springs, we have it being proportional to the square of the torque. So that is, that's all we've got for springs. Um, we'll pick it up and finish off the spring elements or uh, mechanical rotational elements on Monday. Have a good weekend. Do take the quiz. It is relatively easy, but um, I think you guys will be fine on it.